as well as what to expect with this campaign. So the first topic, um, we have two social media gurus, Allison Hayslip, who you heard from before, team member of the year, um, and Nick Nick, who was a candidate last year who raised over $50,000. And both of them have some really creative ways that they utilize social media to raise awareness for their campaigns and actually raise funds. So I will uh, let them begin. Sweet. I haven't been called a social media guru since I was on The Voice. Oh. <laughs> um, Nick, you left me. See ya. All right. Hi, guys. Okay, so yeah, we're going to talk about... So, to, yeah, there's a lot of you. I didn't want to put the mic down. Um, we're going to talk about social media because uh, both... What did you bring? Stop. Okay. <laughs> both, uh, both Nick and I uh, raise a lot of money via social media. I, I think they said that I... I was able to raise over $40,000. I believe over 30,000 of that came from social media and outreach and that sort of stuff. I think I only, I mean, I don't say only got 10,000, but I got 10,000 from the emails and things like that. And everything else was from social. And if you guys are on social media, you all know that what resonates with people, what gets the most attention on social posts is when things are actually like exciting and funny and while raising money for uh, cancer doesn't necessarily seem to fall under that. That was really what I tried to do. I tried to make the campaigning fun for people who are seeing these posts or reading these posts or whatever. Try to make it games and things like that. Um, can you tell your algorithm thing? Because that was, this blew my mind. Yeah. <laughs> now remember, this was so three months ago, but um, <laughs> According to the Facebook algorithms during our campaign last year, uh, a like on Facebook got you one point, a comment got you two, and a share got you three points. I would encourage you to research that and find out what the current algorithm is to maximize your guys' posts. But if you can get the rest of your team to like, comment, and share every time you make a post on Facebook, it's going to push that post to the top of their feed, your feed, everybody's feed in that network. So um, that will absolutely accelerate those posts. So, yeah. So I tried to, you, I'm sure you've heard a million times, but throughout this campaign, you'll be sent a ton of information, a ton of facts on what LLS does. And instead of just reposting those facts into a Facebook post or an Instagram or whatever, I would do things like, I have this weird looking cactus in my apartment, so I would sit on the floor in front of the cactus and like have a conversation with my cactus about these facts from LLS, which got people to watch it more and, and, and integrate more, you know? Like I just try to make it far more interesting than just a list of facts that I've posted up and like pray that I get a couple likes on. Um, the other thing I did, which I know is going to be unique to me, but maybe you all can figure out how this can work in what you have access to, but I actually have a podcast that um, we, we say it's a 30-ish minute podcast. So when I started this campaign, I kind of did a call to action on the podcast. I was like, hey, if anyone's listening out there and like is interested in this kind of thing, we're just going to sort of ask if you can donate 30-ish dollars. That would be great. And I will thank you on the podcast. And like making it something that unique, I started getting donations that were like $30.30 or $33.33. It drove Lauren crazy. She was like, I don't understand why Allison's total isn't an even number. I always had some like weird sense in there. But then I even got donations that were like $330 and one guy donated $3,030. And I, I, I got that one because that was a person I didn't know, just a listener from the podcast. I actually went and I was like, this, I hope this wasn't a mistake. I hope this person didn't like accidentally hit too many zeros because to get a donation from that si of that size from someone you've never met was incredible. And then I checked and it, his address was uh, like somewhere in like Silicon Valley and I was like, I have a feeling this person can afford that. I'm just gonna assume that that was the correct amount. Um, but then thanking everyone the following week, uh, people just loved hearing their names and getting thanked and I realized I had people who would re-donate every week just to get thanked on the podcast and that's how I ended up raising a ton of money but that was shocking to me. I like that. I, I liked that you chose a unique way that was kind of personalized to you and your campaign and your brand. And uh, for me, the three things that I focused on throughout my campaign was consistency, customization, and making it count. And I think by customizing, you know, again, all of you have seen the, the logos in the handbook and there's a ton more on the, on the thumb drive. 
coming up with something that is unique to you. It doesn't have to be the coolest looking thing. You don't have to have a graphic designer in your team to come up with your logo and your team name, but something that means something to you, that you can brand, that you can attach yourself to, that you can get the rest of your team to buy into uh, is really important because this is an image, this is a, a name that is going to be consistent across your whole campaign. For me, our, our team was called Team Elevate and we did something, this is our logo here, Team Elevate, and we actually, I decided to put uh, our logo on a pair of socks, and this sounds really weird, but halfway through your campaign, and, and you guys were talking about this through your uh, team building and stuff, um, through that campaign, a lot of times you'll, you'll have maybe 20 team members when you start, and maybe only like five active team members. Halfway through my campaign, I decided to get together with each one of those people that weren't as active, and sit down with them and, and hand them a pair of socks and say, you are a part of my team. This is for you, and you are part of Team Elevate, and this brand, I want you to share it, I want you to talk about it. Um, and so, it, it, taking that to social media then, and having the consistency, and I can't stress that enough, um, being consistent, posting several times a day on Instagram, probably one solid post a day, or at least every other day, will be sufficient. But also, it's. I don't think that I got a lot of success from people actually clicking the links that I posted in uh, in my social media posts like you did but what it did do is it translated to real-world experiences because I'm out socializing a lot so what would happen is I would be out at a bar hanging out or at another event I'm a musician so I'm out playing a lot I would be talking to someone hey I, I noticed uh, you've been posting this thing about Team Elevate what the hell is this thing so it actually brought people to me to open that conversation as an icebreaker. So I would encourage you not only to, uh, to have some sort of a brand that you can attach yourself to in your team, but be really consistent with it and make it count. So uh, to make it count, I would suggest to always, always have a call to action. Make sure people have a link to click to. Um, you're not just posting the link, you're making it personalized and uh, yeah. And I'm sure this has been said uh, in one of the other talks, but you raise so much money right at the end of your campaign because that's when you get to post things like, only five days left, only three days, 24 hours left, and people really respond to, uh, to that kind of stuff. There's something you said that I wanted to, oh shoot, now I'm spacing. Well, even the, uh, the hours countdown, not just the days, but in the day of, the last day of the campaign, I remember sitting down and every hour on the hour I did like a, a 10 hour countdown or something. I woke up super early and just posted a 10 on that hour and something that reminded me of a 10 and then a nine and then an eight and, and so forth. And, and that last day, I think I'm probably 20% of my funds came from that last day. Um, the last thing I wanted to, unless you had another comment, you remembered what you were gonna say? Well, I was just gonna say, I raised $1,500 in the last second. Like that's how quickly these things came in when you were like, there's five minutes left, you know? Well, not all of us have 47,000 fans. Um, <laughs> congratulations to you. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is um, the challenges, the weekly challenges. Um, you guys did, we went over that stuff, did we not yet? Not yet. Okay, so the challenges, every once in a while there'll be a blitz daily or a weekly challenge for your team or for you personally to raise a certain amount of money. If you get a certain amount of unique donations, LLS will match that or throw your team an extra $1,000. Um, and uh, Lauren can help you explain, or she can explain where all those dollars are coming from, etc. cetera. But uh, a thing to enhance, you guys should take full advantage of this stuff because it's free money. Uh, and you, all you have to do is put it out there to your social media contacts. The biggest thing that was effective for me in those challenges was not only going after getting that extra unique dollar and encouraging my team. I would obviously send my team an email and let them know what the challenge was for the week and ask them all to make an effort to achieve that challenge. But once someone, I noticed that a donation just came in. Where the hell did that come from? And I'd search, oh, Ashley got that one. I would text Ashley on the side like, hey, do you mind replying to all in our email thread and just saying, hey, I just got my first donation. Come on, guys, let's do this. 
Because for some reason, when you have 20 plus people on an email thread as part of your team, group think becomes a real issue. Like people are not responding because they feel like they're part of too big of a group or they're, they're, they're a fear of being you know, some sort of a, an outcast in that group. Well, encourage them, let them know that they're, they're all being watched. Have someone hold them accountable. Um, as those start to come in, have more people reply to all on that uh, email thread. Uh, I did remember the thing I wanted to say real quick and then we'll wrap it up. Um, you've probably noticed if you're on Facebook, Facebook now allows you to donate your birthday to a charity. Um, instead of doing that on Facebook, if your birthday is coming up in these 10 weeks, post your LLS link because that'll be a very easy way. You know, and then you can, that's something where you can pull into like, oh, my birthday's March 15th, but if everyone could donate $30.15, you know, and then people will run with it the way they want to. I, I think like making things unique and just being, not just being like, I need $100 from everybody. You know, people pay attention that way. Just make it as unique as you can, make it as fun as you can, and people will respond to that sort of thing. Cool. Cool. Thanks, guys.